Before I was a film and video guy, I was an audio guy. Therefore, I was quite interested a few years ago when Adobe bought CoolEdit, a really nice audio editing program on Windows, and re-released it as Adobe Audition. Well, the big news these days is that Adobe has taken Audition and ported it to the Macintosh as well. And Audition is included in Creative Suite 5.5. It's taking the place of Soundbooth, their former easy audio editing program. Therefore, I'd like to take a couple of movies to show you how to work Audition into your workflow with After Effects. For those playing along at home with their own copy of Creating Motion Graphics, I open up the example project that went with Bonus Chapter 36 on audio effects. I've opened up a pair of the comps, O5A and O5B, that were examples of using the EQ effects that come with After Effects to create sort of a tinny radio or telephone sound. I'm going to turn off the effects so you can hear the original track. A tough, fast-talking, two-fisted gumshoe but turns down dames like a 38 DeSoto turns down side streets. And then here's an example of using just a simple high-pass and low-pass filters to try to restrict the bandwidth a little bit to sound a little bit more like a cheap TV. A tough, fast-talking, two-fisted gumshoe but turns down dames like a 38 DeSoto turns down side streets. A tough. And that example project went further using the parametric EQ to do a more sophisticated version of boosting the voice and cutting any sort of bass or low frequencies. A tough, fast talking, two fisted gumshoe, but turns down dames like a 38 DeSoto turns down side streets. Now, to make this work, I did have to have some knowledge of how the audio effects worked inside After Effects. And if you are an audio person, Adobe Audition is a fantastic tool. There's a lot of depth there. However, if you're just a video person with limited knowledge of audio, Audition still comes with some nice favorites and presets to make your life easier. I'm going to turn off the After Effects processing. I'm going to select my audio track and go to Edit, Edit in Adobe Audition. Now, you might notice that they kept the old command, Edit in Sound Booth, as well. Adobe's thinking on this is that you might still have an installation of CS4 or CS5 that came with Soundbooth, and maybe you'll find this simplified program easier to use. But going forward, Soundbooth has been retired and replaced with a much more powerful Audition. So I'll say, Edit in Adobe Audition. It switches me to that program, and my audio file is already opened up automatically inside Audition's viewer. Now, there's a few things I can do to further enhance and, <laughs> let's put it this way, degrade this audio file. One problem I see, which is common, particularly with less expensive audio gear, is there's a gap between this red line, which is supposed to be silence, zero, and this green line where there's supposed to be silence in the audio file. That gap is referred to by audio people as a DC offset, a direct current or voltage offset. If you were to place an edit right at this point, you would hear a click as your audio file jumped down to indeed pure silence. So if you ever bring an audio file into something like Audition, and you see a gap between silence in the audio file and the true silence, that red center line, you want to remove this DC offset. Well, that's easy enough. You can go to Favorites, Repair DC Offset. Release the mouse, and that's fixed. The reason the screen turned white is now the entire waveform has been automatically selected by Audition to operate on. Okay, I've got it repaired. Now let's do that fake low fidelity sound. Let's go look at Favorites again. And look, they have a preset called Telephone voice. So let's apply that favorite. Now, when I play back, it sounds like this. Well, that's even more distressed than my treatment in After Effects. So, as you can see, you can push things a lot further in Audition. However, the volume level is quite low. It's very quiet. So, let's make that louder. I'll go back to favorites again, and I can either normalize, which says maximize the available sound in the file, or I can use an additional processing function called hard limit. A limiter is an audio processor that's used to make things sound artificially loud. It cranks them up, but instead of allowing them to distort, it limits their maximum volume at a certain level so that you don't go into the red and so that you don't get bad clipping noise. I'm going to use hard limit to make this louder. It's processed. I'll play this back. So there's that process file. Now it's nice that Audition comes with favorites, but you may say, you know, that's a fairly short list. Well, don't worry, you can create your own favorites. For example, there's a whole list of effects you can apply. And if you pick one of them, like filter and EQ, 
and pick something like, say, the graphic equalizer, you'll find that each of those effects come with their own long list of presets as well. You can go ahead and pick a preset and save it as a favorite. If I do that, I'll go ahead and call this 1965 part two, say okay, apply that. Look at my favorites column, and there it is. So even if you're not experienced with Audition or with audio, you can take advantage of these favorites and lots of presets that come with the effects. Anyway, now that I'm done, I'll just hit Command S on Mac, Control S on Windows to save the file. Then I'll Command Tab, back into After Effects, and this file will automatically be replaced for me. I'll ramp preview now. So there was my audition processed file brought quickly and easily back in After Effects and notice that effects are turned off. I could even delete this altogether. The original file has been changed. So that's an example of simple processing. But what if you want to go further and really use the power of audition? I'll show a bit of that in the next movie.